title, Locked in Terror. As I walked into Westwood High School that fateful morning, the usual excitement that accompanied the start of a new day was replaced with an eerie tension. Rumors had been circulating for days about a looming lockdown drill, but something about today felt different. My heart raced as I navigated the crowded hallways, glancing at my friends with worried expressions mirroring my own. As the first period bell rang, I found my seat in Ms. Harrow's history class. The air seemed heavier than usual, and the muffled whispers of my classmates only heightened the unease that had settled over the room. Ms. Harrow, normally cheerful and energetic, appeared visibly anxious as she began taking attendance. I exchanged a concerned glance with my best friend, Lily, who sat two rows ahead. Just as the attendance was being completed, the intercom crackled to life with a burst of static. Ms. Harrow's face turned even paler as the principal's voice, usually calm and collected, sounded strained and distant. Attention all students and staff, the principal's voice trembled. We are initiating a lockdown drill immediately. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Gasps rippled through the room and panic painted itself across our faces. This wasn't how lockdown drills were supposed to go. The classroom door swung shut with a hollow thud and Ms. Harrow rushed to lock it. In that moment, the room felt like a pressure cooker of fear, each heartbeat a hammering reminder of our vulnerability. As we huddled in the corner, I noticed Lily's knuckles turning white as she gripped her phone. Her fingers danced across the screen and her face twisted into a mask of disbelief. She showed me her phone, a text from her brother, a senior at our school. Stay quiet, don't open the door for anyone. My mind raced with questions, but the dread that silenced our classroom also silenced my voice. Outside the windows, the once vibrant courtyard was now a desolate wasteland. The sun was hidden behind heavy clouds, casting a sickly gray hue over the scene. Shadows danced along the glass and each gust of wind seemed to carry a whisper of menace. Time passed, in agonizing slowness. The intercom remained silent, leaving us in a vacuum of uncertainty. The air grew colder and I shivered despite my attempts to stay still. We exchanged worried glances, unsure of what horrors might be lurking beyond the classroom walls. It was during this agonizing wait that a soft scraping sound reached our ears. A shiver ran down my spine as the noise grew closer, resembling the deliberate scrape of something sharp against the linoleum floor. Our eyes widened in shared terror as the doorknob jiggled ever so slightly. Ms. Harrow's face turned to stone as she motioned for us to huddle even closer. The scraping continued, joined by a soft, deliberate tapping that seemed to echo with a rhythm of malevolence. In the silence, the tapping created an almost hypnotic effect, drawing us into its macabre dance. Suddenly, the intercom burst back to life, a burst of static followed by a strained, guttural voice. Let me in. It's cold out here. I just want to come in and warm up. The voice was unrecognizable, twisted, and inhuman. It sent a surge of terror through us, paralyzing even the urge to breathe. Ms. Harrow, her voice trembling, whispered to us, Remember, we don't open the door for anyone during a lockdown, no matter what they say. Her words were a lifeline in the sea of fear, reminding us of our training and the thin barrier that separated use from whatever lay outside. The scraping and tapping persisted, accompanied by a chorus of distorted whispers that seemed to seep through the walls themselves. Time stretched on, and it felt like an eternity had passed in that stifling darkness. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the intercom sputtered to life one last time. The lockdown is over. You may now resume your activities. The tension in the room snapped like a rubber band, replaced by a mixture of confusion and relief. Miss Harrow hesitantly approached the door and unlocked it. As the daylight flooded back into the classroom, we stumbled out, our limbs heavy with the weight of the ordeal we had just endured. The courtyard was now bathed in sunlight, the shadows banished by the morning glow. But the memory of those haunting sounds, the tapping, scraping, and inhuman voice, lingered like a nightmare that refused to fade. We were safe, but the horrors we had encountered would forever be etched in our minds, a chilling reminder of the day our school became a battleground between the known and the unknowable.
Title, Locked in Dread. As the final bell rang, signaling the end of another mundane school day, I gathered my belongings and began to make my way home. The halls echoed with the sounds of chattering students, their footsteps creating a rhythmic beat against the cold linoleum floor. Little did I know, this routine walk home would soon turn into a nightmare beyond my imagination. I stepped outside, greeted by the crimson hues of the setting sun that cast eerie shadows on the pavement. Unease settled in the pit of my stomach, a feeling that something wasn't right. As I started down the familiar path, a sudden shrill of the emergency alarm pierced the air, drowning out the usual sounds of traffic and conversation. Students poured out of the building, their faces etched with confusion and fear. Teachers hurriedly ushered us back inside, panic evident in their wide eyes and hushed whispers. Lockdown, someone muttered, and the word spread like wildfire. We were ushered into our respective classrooms, the once cheerful atmosphere now thick with tension. Sitting at my desk, I peered out of the window, my heart racing as I tried to make sense of the situation. Police cars lined the street, their flashing lights painting the school in a sinister glow. Rumors began to circulate among my classmates, each more terrifying than the last. A stranger with a weapon, they whispered, an escaped convict on the loose. The truth was elusive, trapped behind locked doors and a wall of uncertainty. Time seemed to stretch, the minutes dragging on like hours. The intercom crackled to life, and the principal's voice trembled as she explained that there was a potential threat in the area. We were to remain quiet and hidden until the all-clear was given. My heart pounded in my chest, the realization sinking in that our lives could be in danger. As darkness descended outside, the classroom felt like a tomb. The once familiar faces of my classmates now wore expressions of fear and vulnerability. We huddled together in silence. The only sound, the soft whimpering of someone nearby. I glanced at the clock, the ticking seconds amplifying my anxiety. Hours passed, and the tension only grew. The intercom remained silent, leaving us to wonder what horrors might be unfolding beyond our barricaded sanctuary. A few students attempted to peer out the windows, desperate for any glimpse of the outside world, but were quickly reprimanded by our teacher. The unknown was more terrifying than any concrete threat. A distant sound caught my attention, a faint scraping that seemed to come from the hallway. My breath caught in my throat as I exchanged worried glances with my classmates. The scraping grew louder, more pronounced, and panic spread through the room like wildfire. Was the threat finally upon us? Our teacher motioned for us to huddle together in the corner, away from the door and windows. The lights were turned off, plunging the room into darkness, save for the faint glow of the emergency exit signs. The scraping sound drew closer, accompanied by an unsettling creaking that echoed down the hallway. My heart raced as my mind conjured up images of a malevolent figure inching closer to our classroom. And then silence. The scraping abruptly ceased, leaving us in a state of heightened dread. Time stretched on, each second feeling like an eternity. Minutes turned into hours, and still, there was no word from the authorities. Fear gnawed at my insides, and I could feel the collective terror of my classmates. Just as despair threatened to consume us entirely, the intercom crackled to life once more. The principal's voice, shaky but resolute, announced that the threat had been neutralized. We were safe to come out of our hiding places. A wave of relief washed over the room, tears streaming down the faces of many. We emerged from our corner, trembling but alive. As we stepped out into the hallway, the scene was one of chaos and relief. Parents embraced their children, tears of gratitude and fear mingling in their eyes. Outside, police officers and emergency personnel bustled about, bringing a sense of security to the once turbulent atmosphere. In the aftermath, the true nature of the threat was revealed. A disturbed individual had been found in the vicinity, armed and dangerous. The prompt response of law enforcement had averted a potential disaster. But the scars of that harrowing experience remained, etched into the hearts and minds of everyone who had endured the lockdown. From that day on, 
the school carried a weight of darkness, a reminder of the fragility of safety and the lurking terrors that could shatter it in an instant. The once familiar halls held an eerie quality, the memory of that endless lockdown forever haunting our steps. And as the sun set each evening casting long shadows, the echoes of that scraping sound and the palpable fear in the air returned, a chilling reminder of the day our ordinary school became a realm of Unim. Title, The Intruder in the Shadows I had always found school to be a place of structure and safety, a haven away from the uncertainties of the outside world. But that day, the illusion of security shattered like glass, leaving behind a haunting tale that still sends shivers down my spine. It was an ordinary Tuesday, the sun struggling to pierce through the thick blanket of clouds. I sat in my English class, half listening to the teacher's lecture, lost in my own thoughts. The intercom crackled to life, announcing a code red lockdown. Confusion rippled through the room as our teacher swiftly moved to lock the door and turn off the lights. We huddled in the corner, our hearts racing, and a heavy silence descended, broken only by the sound of our collective breaths. Whispers began to circulate among my classmates, the uncertainty of the situation causing panic to creep into our minds. Why were we in lockdown? What danger lurked beyond the classroom door? The minutes dragged on, each one dripping with unease. Outside, the wind howled against the windows, amplifying the tension within the room. Through the faint glow of the emergency lights, I exchanged worried glances with my classmates. The intercom remained silent, the absence of information fueling our fears. As time stretched on, I became acutely aware of the shadows dancing along the walls, morphing into grotesque shapes in my imagination. The creaks and groans of the old building took on a sinister tone, and I felt an icy chill crawl up my spine. A muffled thud echoed down the hallway, causing us all to freeze. The sounds of shuffling and whispers reached our ears, distant but unmistakably real. Panic surged through the room, a collective realization that we were not alone in the building. Every creak of the floorboards, Every murmur in the distance sent our hearts into overdrive. Our teacher motioned for Oost to stay silent, her own fear reflected in her eyes. We hugged the walls, the darkness offering a me-ear shield from the unknown presence that had invaded our sanctuary. Minutes felt like hours as the sounds grew closer, the shuffling footsteps becoming more distinct, more purposeful. And then, the footsteps stopped. The silence was suffocating, broken only by the pounding of my heart. I strained my ears, my breath caught in my throat, waiting for some sign of what was happening outside. I could feel the eyes of my classmates on me, their fear mirroring my own. A soft scraping sound reached us, followed by a rustling that seemed to come from just outside the classroom door. My mind raced, conjuring up images of a malevolent figure lurking in the shadows. I dared not even breathe, fearing that the slightest noise would reveal our presence to whatever horror was out there. I exchanged a tense glance with my closest friend, our wide eyes reflecting shared terror. The scraping grew louder, accompanied by the faint scent of something foul, something unmistakably human, yet tainted by the stench of desperation. It was then that a flash of memory hit me, a recent news article about a homeless man who had been seen in the vicinity of the school. Could it be him? A choked whimper escaped from one of my classmates, and the scraping sound abruptly ceased. The air grew heavy with anticipation, and I could almost feel the weight of the unknown presence lingering just beyond the door. Seconds felt like an eternity, and then a voice, a hollow, cracked whisper, reached our ears. Help me. The words hung in the air like a cursed incantation, freezing us in place. The voice was ragged, laden with desperation, and it sent a chill down my spine that I couldn't shake. The teacher exchanged a glance with our assistant principal, her expression torn between compassion and fear. But our instructions were clear. Remain in lockdown. Do not open the door. Tears welled up in my eyes as the voice continued to plead, its haunting words etching themselves into my mind. It was a voice that carried the weight of a life lived on the fringes of society, a life defined by struggle.